Hello everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm Hello everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm your host Mark Fusco here for, well, this is the fourth anniversary show of the website, of the show, or whatever it is. Uh, today, because I did release this on the actual anniversary, May 28th, uh, see, 2013, blah, blah, blah. so uh, four years ago today, in 2009, uh, I launched the very first episode. And I meant to actually rewatch that, but um, it's okay, I already started, oh, I got a little... Got a little friend here. I'm gonna smush him. There we go. A little spider action. Um, <clears throat> four years ago today, started off uh, Leet Wine TV. Uh, the website had been uh, bought, the name had been bought about two, three months prior uh, to starting this. And this was started off as, um, as a kind of a wine blog. Uh, it was a way for me to. Uh, Re, start relearning uh, things that I had learned about wine. I had kind of slapped on my studies about wine and I kind of felt that I could, you know, doing this on video instead of just writing about it really would force me to delve into wine and learn more about it. Uh, out of that grew Sommelier School, which I, I haven't really resumed yet. I kind of plan, I had planned to resume it by now, but just haven't done it. Really, a lot of it is the time involved in creating a weekly, and even the, the goal is to go back to maybe going bi-weekly. Um, I, I don't really want to call it a master level course, because I, I wouldn't call it a master sommelier level course, but you know something of a higher level course um, to, uh, uh, to educate, because it's more of a, than a wine enthusiast thing. So I haven't really resumed doing that, but um, you know, so but sommelier, sommelier school grew out of that, and uh, over the past four years, I, I've gotten a lot of views. Um, the quick math in my head: we're, we're over three hundred thousand views total in the lifetime of all the shows, not including sommelier school. I don't have a lot of views of that, which is fine because that was an exclusively on the website. Basically, um, you can see this in a ton of places. So well, let's go with the, the places you see it the most. TiVo. Uh, all of you on TiVo, I really, really appreciate that you watch this. And you sit on your couch. That's why I changed the format to a half an hour at least uh, format. Uh, speaking of that, I didn't start my little timer, so it's okay. Um, so I changed the format to what it is. Because uh, those of you who have not watched, it used to be a, a, a daily show, five days a week, one wine, about 10 minutes long. Uh, and it was obviously a direct descendant of Gary Vaynerchuk's uh, Wine Library TV, which is still very much, you know, uh, I guess an influence of mine, even though Gary hasn't produced a, a video in about two years now. Uh, do I think I've officially uh, accepted the baton? Um, yes and no. Uh, he hasn't produced anything. Nobody else really is out there producing um, anything like what I do uh, on any type of regular basis. Uh, I know that a buddy of mine, uh, not, not like a buddy, like I actually know the person, know him in person, but um, I know that uh, somebody else has resumed uh, some videos. That'd be Sam Scapari. Um, so you may, I'm, now that I've mentioned him, I got to put a link to his stuff, um, Wine Passion TV. Um, so uh, check his stuff out. I, I need to start watching his, uh, his uh, videos. He resumed. Uh, doing that recently. I uh, gave him some props last night for doing that. Um, that's really it. Uh, you've got Wine Dine TV, uh, Jessica Altieri. She doesn't really do what I do. She she is very very much an interview thing, uh, very short form, doesn't go very long. It's it's really like three, four, five minutes long. So it's, it's really more like, a, it's, honestly, it's, it's really uh, geared towards maybe having it um, as kind of like a, a, a news station type of thing. Though I don't think her stuff really is picked up by news stations, but it's, it's really that, that quick, very quick video type of stuff, uh, not in depth. 
Nothing wrong with it. I mean, there this is a different style. Um, naked Naked TV or Naked Wine TV had stopped production right around the same time that uh, uh, Wine Library started production. No, Gary wasn't the naked guy. Uh, wasn't the naked woman in drag or anything like that. Um, but they're like the only major players that I know out there. I mean, there are some other ones that are that are closer to my level, but um, there's also um, uh, I can't remember the, the name of it. It's wine. Maybe maybe that one was wine something. Maybe that was wine dying TV. Anyway, uh, 13 episodes on on that one. Uh, you can find that on Blip. They feature it for some reason. Not really sure why. That person hasn't uh, produced a video, I think, since New Year's Eve. And then prior to that, it had been like 10 months. Uh, but yet, that person's featured on Blip. Um, so, all in all, I mean, I, I've produced 270. This is 277. Uh, so, we've, we've really come a long way. I posted something last night about, it's not the wines that I remember about doing this. It's, it's really the people that I've met. Uh, the people I've interviewed, the, uh, I mean, the experiences I've had with the wines, but not necessarily all the individual wines. I mean, there have been some great wines I've had, some mediocre and some pretty bad wines, very few very bad wines. Uh, but I've got a lot of really great wines and, and really good wines and some decent wines uh, along the way. And I just, first of all, I just want to thank everyone who's watched it. Uh, I mentioned this in the post. If more than just my parents or now my dad, um, watch this it's an accomplishment um just all the people that have watched this is has been very very heartfelt and i really appreciate that um we have more to come i mean we're at 277 i I'm, i was hoping to get 300 done by september but that's going to be pretty difficult if not impossible so episode 300 uh my grandiose idea i think i'm going to put that idea out um, put that on hold as far as what I really wanted to do uh, and figure out how I'm going to celebrate 300 and figure out when that's going to be because when we get later into the year it's harder to get a restaurant type uh, venue to effectively hand over their venue to you even on a Monday or Tuesday night because they start getting busier for holidays so um, I'm not sure what I'm going to do with that but we'll figure out a 300th episode all right so let's let's kind of get into um, let's get into the wines if you haven't, first of all, if you haven't watched the old episodes, go ahead and watch them. You're going to see a huge difference. That's the other thing. I really want to, again, you know, pat myself on my own, pat myself on my back. Um, you can see that the production quality is, is completely, uh, is, is dramatically improved. Not completely, dramatically improved. Uh, I've got the green screen behind me, which, green screen, no green screen. Um, you know, I've got a green screen now instead of being able to see the background. Uh, I've got actual lighting. These are all fully charged, by the way, so they shouldn't dim out on me. Um, I've got lighting. I've got better audio. You know, I've actually got a microphone that's not wanting to. Hey, what if I did this in that way? The microphone actually points up towards me instead of pointing down. Yeah, you don't get to see the bling, but that's okay. And all that. So, um, you know, really try to improve the quality of it, the better camera and all that. So. Uh, I'm also really, as far as I know, still the only self-produced wine blog, video wine blog out there. Um, this is the shirt I wore in the first episode, so I try to remember to do that when I do an anniversary episode. All right, let's get into the wine. So uh, again, another callback to episode number one. This is the wine that started it all. That's the, that's the title of the first episode, the wine that started it all. Saw this wine. This is a 337 Noble Wines, no, I'm sorry, Noble Vines. 337 Cabernet Sauvignon. This is uh, the bottle I saw at World Market. I thought somebody had named a wine 1337 and for geeks, not just wine geeks, um, to spell leet. But this is just an eat wine. Okay. Um, but, uh, and unfortunately, they, they have a black background, red numbering. They don't have the digital. So I'm still hoping that they don't, like, say I'm stealing their branding. Um, I, I think at this point I've established myself that I had nothing to do with this winery at all. Um, this is also significant. This is the first time I've repeated a label that I can that I know of. I've not repeated any labels um, on the show. Now I may have had the label prior to recording the show maybe years and years ago. Uh, so it'd be different vintage usually. But this is the first label I've repeated. This is a different vintage. This is the 2011 uh, 337 Cabernet Sauvignon. Um, 
Now the significance of the number, now they have other wines. Uh, this is the wine that they first, this is the grape they first did. And they have other wines. Um, 337 is the clone number of the Cabernet Sauvignon that they imported from Bordeaux, from France. Uh, and they felt that that was the one that they took the best or was the best suited uh, to where they grow their wines or their vines, which is in Lodi, California. Um, they also have a few other ones. Uh, they've got a, a Chardonnay. I probably should pull that part up. They have a Chardonnay. They have a Merlot, uh, Pinot Noir, one they call the Red Blend. They call that number one. There isn't a clone, so they call it one. Um, and they also have a Sauvignon Blanc. Um, so a couple things about the numbers. 242 for Sauvignon Blanc. Front 242, awesome old band, you know, it gets really, really heavy, but uh, front 242, I, I really probably should try Sauvignon, that Sauvignon Blanc uh, just because I like the number. And luckily, the Pinot Noir clone is 667, not 666. So I wonder if that was a conscious effort to make sure they didn't, I don't even, maybe there isn't even a 666 Pinot Noir clone, but uh, it'd be interesting to find that out. Um, bought this at World Market again. I know, I know I can get this at Specs, and I think that's about it. The only place, other place I've seen it. Um, it's regularly $12.99. Um, part of the World Explorer program. And uh, so I got it for $10.99. So I saved $2 at World Market. Uh, when are they going to start sponsoring me? I, I do buy a decent amount of wine from them. Specs needs to sponsor me. Joe Sags would be cool. Uh, I also bought some wines from my buddy, uh, Ceci. So we're going to get to those in a second. All right, so uh, Cabernet Sauvignon, um, one of the main grapes of Bordeaux, and uh, huge, huge from California. Good deep color. Let's check out the nose. I do remember the one thing about this wine when I first got it, it was like closer to $15. And I remember saying I, it was too expensive when I first saw it. It was still fifteen dollars three months later when we bought it. All right, I think it was maybe fourteen at the time. So I'm getting this smoke out of it. Um, dark red fruits, pretty earthy, almost leathery. But I don't get, uh, and I, I feel like I get like wood, <coughs> but not this. Not the, uh, not the over-oaked influence that you may get from, from wines. So let's kind of go through that. You may smell wood, like a cedar box thing, and, but there's also the influence of oak. So it's, you know, it's not the wood you smell, it's what the oak does to wine. Uh, so I don't get that type of flavoring, or I'm sorry, uh, aromas out of the wine. Let's try that thing again. Remember we're supposed to be doing that all the time now? But that really did intensify it. Even got some, some like, really the smokiness is, is, is intensified with that. And I felt like I got some floral and more of the more brighter red fruits when I did that. Let's try it again. Yeah, so let's taste it. I still get some of that smokiness. I still get some of that um, darker red fruit. I feel like I get kind of kind of some cherries. Um, I get some acidity on it. The tannins aren't very overwhelming. I'd say they're probably medium, medium, maybe medium plus tannin. Uh, but that was that initial sip. So let's, let's let the palate kind of get used to all that alcohol they just took in. And let's try another taste. All right, things have calmed down a little bit. Um, the acidity seems to be a little bit more in check, and that was probably more about the mouth kind of going, whoa, what happened? 
Um, it feels very meaty, <clears throat> very rustic. Um, I do feel like I taste some wood. Um, uh, the, the fruits are, are more subdued. So this is more of an earthy representation of Cabernet Sauvignon, which this is awesome because it, it kind of evokes older world. Um, I still probably would pin it as new world, but it doesn't have that <clears throat> cherry pie, that, that, that pie aspect that I get a lot from California Cabernet Sauvignon. So that, so that, that's where the oak influence happens. This seems to be uh, less influenced by the oak, which, which is really nice. Now, uh, I know they've got some tasting notes here, and I wanted to see if, if there was something here about the... Um... Yeah, they, did, they, 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 didn't, uh, they talked about they have a mixture of French and American oak, which is pretty common these days, and have, has been for a while. Um, the days of strictly French or strictly American uh, seem to be... Uh, going away and they tend to mix the mix it so you know you used to be able to go well this has French oak so it's it's going to be old world and has American oak so it's going to be new world um, now they start old world and new world start like mixing up their their oak especially the new world they're using mixtures but it doesn't say like if it's new oak old oak um, but you know it, I really do like this um, my memory serves, I probably like this better than I did the initial time. And I think a lot of it also is my palate has matured. I understand wine a little bit better. I'm enjoying wine better. Um, so I, 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 how I remember the wine is I didn't diss it at all, uh, but I probably didn't give it a great high score. Like, and, and, and we all know that I, it was rare for me to give a higher, a 90 or better anyway. And that's kind of why I stopped giving scores. I felt like all my scores were 88 and 87 and 86 you know, an 89, but I was never giving higher than 90. And I really think that giving scores now are just, I don't know, I don't think it's fair. So I recommend the wine, however. I think it's a good value at, at $13, $12.99. You go to World Market, part of the World Market Explorer program, get it for two bucks up, two bucks off, it's even better. Uh, it's opening up a little more, which tends to happen. I'm starting to get the pyrazine, so I'm starting to get the green pepper, uh, which is which is definitely a classic marker for Cabernet Sauvignon. Let's try it again one more time. The wine's developing. It's it's getting better. It's airing out. I did open these bottles quite a while ago. I just, just opened the sparkling uh, just so I can keep the, the bubbles going. But <clears throat> now it's starting to open up because there's more surface area going on. I recommend the wine if you find it, buy it. Um, remember, I have nothing to do with this winery, so I don't get anything out of you buying the wine. There's no, I don't even have ads from them. I don't even, I don't even know if they, I don't even know if they know I exist. So they should know. Anyway. Um, that is an excellent wine. Let's move on to wine number two. All right, we are going to do wine number two. Now, I do want to mention something about wine number one. They've been in business, they said, for, like, for 16 years. They are part of the Delicato uh, family of wines. Um, I'm not sure how all that works because it's really the actual Noble, Noble Vines uh, site doesn't really have much about them themselves. But uh, they are part of the Delicato uh, brand, and they've been around for a while. So um, it's just only when I come up with 16 years, as I said, for the once they planted this clone for the past 16 years, blah, blah, blah. So all right, let's go move on to the next one. Now, these next two wines I bought from uh, Ceci Barreto uh, over at Venusly Speaking uh, Wine Shop. And uh, she is somebody that's uh, local. She's got a, she had a wine blog. Uh, she still blogs. Uh, got this wine shop a little over a year ago, and the um, problem with me buying from her is not anything other than just distance. Um, it, and, and my days off tend to be when, she, when her shop's closed. So um, I tend to not show up at her shop very often, and it's, it, is a, it is a matter of distance. However, uh, the irony is that she lives like five, mile, five minutes away from me, so if I really do need something, I can just tell her, hey, get me some stuff, and then I can meet her 
uh, at her house, or she can meet me here, and I can I can get it. And she's got like the little you know credit card swipey thingy thingy. So um, you don't even need to be at the shop for me to purchase wine. Maybe I shouldn't have said all that. I don't know. TABC, hope you're not watching. Anyway, um, I don't know. I don't think that's illegal at all. I think it's perfectly legal for her to do that. Um, anyway, um, so I went by the shop. I happen to have an, uh, uh, an opening shift at work, um, which I should be getting some more of those, which is great. Uh, remember, I do have a day job. So anyway, um, so I stopped by to pick up some wine. I said, listen, I need some wine. So I'm going to get some sparkling wine and need another red that's going to be worthy of um be worthy of uh whatchamacallit um a four-year anniversary i'm just remembering i forgot to stop the audio recording on the recorder between takes so no big deal uh, anyway um so we're going to start off with this wine and this is i feel like i'm doing my first episode again i'm having all the distractions i can't sit i can't speak all right, so uh, we went with something a little different, a little interesting. Um, this is in the, the McNabb Ridge uh, Pinotage, and it's from the Napoli Vineyard. And that was kind of why I bought this. Uh, besides that it was Pinotage, uh, I got it for $17. Uh, and she's got the, uh, I got a picture of these anyway. She's got the price uh, written on there on the bottle, so it's very easy to see how much these wines cost. You don't have to squint or look for a little shelf thing. Um, this is the 2010 vintage. Uh, McNabb has been around for, for quite a while. I don't know why I have that up. Um, they, I thought I had their history up. Maybe I didn't. Um, how about about us? There we go. Um, they, they, they were connected with Parducci, which if you've been a long time viewer of the show, almost since episode one, I think this was episode 23 or 26, uh, I had a Parducci Petit Syrah on the show, and so they're connected with Parducci. So kind of kind of cool. I didn't realize that when I, when I bought it uh, that they're still the, that they're connected with the Parducci group, and um, uh, so kind of the early days of, of the video of the show. So um, anyway, so they but they've been around for a while. It said uh, as one of the pioneers, Parducci family, blah blah blah. Um, so they've been doing it for seventy years, and they, uh, uh, so their family is <clears throat> part of this whole McNabb Ridge. Now, McNabb Ridge itself was named after a Scotsman that, that emigrated in the 1800s to the area. So it was called the McNabb Valley. Um, and this is in Mendocino County. So Mendocino is um, uh, northwest of San Francisco and northwest of Sonoma County. So this is a little bit farther north. Um, and it's along the Pacific coast. So, uh, he, in the 1800s, he emigrated there and, uh, then he eventually started, um, uh, he had, he had, a uh, uh, McNabb Ridge and then the Parducci's came in. I think it was just, I think it was more than the Parducci's. Other people came in and started planting vines, um, when they weren't making any money in the gold rush. Okay. So, um, <clears throat> They've been making wine here for a little while, and I've, we got their Pinotage. Now, Pinotage is interesting. We're, it's an American Pinotage. Now, Pinotage was developed in South Africa. It is the combination of Pinot Noir, and the French name is Cinso, but in South Africa it's called Hermitage. So that's why you get Pinotage. So it's a, it's a um, cross between the two. I think I'm using the right terminology, a cross. It's a crossbreeding of the two grapes. It's kind of like where we got Cabernet Sauvignon from, Cabernet Franc and Sauvignon Blanc. Um, so Pinotage is, is known as more of a South African grape. Why they decided on Pinotage, I'm not really sure, but we are going to check it out. Uh, on the Napoli Vineyard uh, is, is the vineyards behind the actual homestead uh, of McNabb. And, uh, you know, it's actually, you know, the McNabb homestead. And uh, Napoli is actually the first name of the gentleman who, who owns the vineyards. But having Naples and Napoli and the family history, my family history and all that, and we're not from Naples, but it's the closest large town city that people can grab onto as far as geography. Um, so anyway, I felt it was kind of cool to do that too. So let's check it out. Pretty decent color.
Now, when the last one I didn't really have any pie aspect, this kind of does. Um, there's also a meatiness to it. Not as much smoke, but um, there's a bit of meatiness to it. I also get kind of a rubber, kind of a tire. Tire shop almost aroma to it. And, and, and funny enough, a little bit of chocolate. So almost like chocolate covered tires. It's kind of gross, isn't it? Let's check it out. cool thing about wine is sometimes or many times the smell isn't always what you taste so if you thought chocolate covered tires when you smelled it you didn't taste chocolate covered tires here so that's a good thing I'm glad we didn't get chocolate covered tires from the wine and, and I, I'm, I'm almost now tempted to call it chocolate covered tires for the show but since nothing chased, tasted like that um, it'd be kind of a false advertisement I definitely come up with the show titles after I record everything. I have no idea what I want to call this one. Maybe I'll call it Back to the Beginning. A little Princess Bride reference. Um, this is really nice. It's, it's pretty smooth. Um, Tannins are, are definitely a little more active here. I really get a nice drying of the front part of my gums. Um, I'd really definitely call them medium plus on the tannins. Um, some good acidity on it, on the tongue. Um, definitely get uh, uh, red fruits on the palate. Not an explosion of red fruits by any means, but are you kidding me? These should have been fully charged batteries and it just went out. Um, I'm so so upset right now um i'm just i am going to censor what i would want to say right now um anyway i mean they lasted less than the old batteries i just turned them on right before we started it's only been 25 minutes okay maybe maybe it's been on for 30 minutes and they should have lasted two hours anyway um so the the fruits the fruits are pretty good on it um Get a little bit of um, a little bit of wood on there, but um, it's a good flavor. I would have no way of knowing. I wouldn't. I wouldn't pin, pin this as Pinotage because I really don't have reference enough reference for what a Pinotage is supposed to taste like, let alone an American Pinotage. Um, I mean, if it was if it was me trying to figure this out, I'd probably go Tempranillo or go Syrah. Or something like that outside of the Cabernet Merlot Zin um, type of thing. I would probably be going into that type of thing. But it's tasty. I like it a lot. Uh, I think it's a good value. Especially $17 thing is a really good value. Um, so if you find it, I would definitely, definitely buy it. So now we're going to take, I mean, I'm going to have a segment. I don't have another battery to put in there. So that light's just going to be out. However, <clears throat> we're going to change the exposure on the camera to compensate for that. So let's move on to the next wine. And we'll be back in two seconds. Okay, so now I've adjusted the um, lighting. Well, actually, I just adjusted the exposure and white balance on the camera again. So let's move on to wine number three. And I should have had another large glass for this, but oh well. We'll evaluate it in the flute. <clears throat> okay, so um, this is the 2010 Navarone Cava from, uh, from Spain, and this is, comes out of the Penedes region of uh, um, Spain, and I bought this for $16. 
Uh, it's a vintage kava, so you don't necessarily see a lot of vintage kavas, usually they're non-vintage. So I thought it was pretty cool. Um, and it was really cool because Ole Imports, they really put a, they put a bunch of stuff on the back on here, so it's really nice to see this. Uh, the grapes they use are 50% Charello, 30% uh, uh, Macabeo, and 20% Pariata. Now, Navan, let's get through all these. The Navan uh, label here, Navaron, sorry, I almost said to say Navan, Navaron, uh, they've been around for a little while. Uh, <clears throat> let's go through the history real quick. Uh, the 11th century is where, um, come on, history, there you go. 11th century is uh, when the, um, uh, let's see, well, the, the family home in, in, in Cava's Navarone are located where, you know, where the family home is located. Go back to the 11th century as witnessed by the Romanesque chapel that still exists on the estate. So they've got some history there. <clears throat> this is most of Europe. Uh, it was 19th century, Pablo Pariata um, <clears throat> is the person who kind of started all this. Uh, he uh, immigrated to Argentina, made a bunch of money, moved back to Spain, married the daughter of the Marquis of Navarone, and they bought the estate. And then uh, after Phylloxera, they, um, what should we call it? They uh, uprooted everything and planted this grape called uh, Montenegro, which is currently known as Pariata. So kind of interesting where the name came from. So, um, <clears throat> and Pariata is one of the main grape varietals of uh, Cava. Uh, they'll, they'll also use Chardonnay, but they use Charello, Maccabe, Maccabe are, the, are the other two main ones, but sometimes you get Chardonnay in there. Um, and uh, the current group of people that are running this, uh, uh, in, founded in 1984. And uh, so they've been running it since then. Uh, but there's been a long history on and off of winemaking since at least the 19th century. So uh, Cava is the, the sparkling wine of Spain. Uh, they've been doing it for quite a while. And um, it's a great alternative to champagne. Uh, excellent quality, uh, typically much cheaper than getting uh, top quality champagne, um, you're getting good, but you're getting good quality out of it. I, I'd say in, in the ranks of how sparkling wine is ranked, champagne tends to be the top ranked sparkling wine, you know, the, the standard that everybody aspires to. And Cava, in, in my, my personal opinion, is the next level. Um, uh, th there's definitely some top Cava's that will rival some good champagnes. I mean, you know, it's not like, it's not like you don't have any good Cava's out there. You have plenty. I, I love Cava. I love it because it's, it's, it's a similarity to champagne, um, but you get good quality for a good price. And that's really the biggest, the biggest thing about getting uh, any wine or any product, really. So um, you got a nice gold color on this. Uh, so we got the bubbles going. Uh, so it's only been open for a little bit, about maybe an hour, I guess, has been open. Uh, it's warmed up a bit. I, I kept it in the refrigerator overnight, so it's warmed up a little, a little bit. So it's a little bit closer to a, a true serving temperature. Now, again, I didn't really get the big glass because usually I do white first, but I want to do three, three, three through seven first. So let's see if I can get some aromas out of this. You know, I feel like I get some, like some, some apple <clears throat> out of it. I'm going to cleanse my palate a little bit with some water. Definitely apples for days on this. Crisp. The acidity isn't super high, but it's got some medium acidity, maybe medium minus acidity on it. <clears throat> um, you know, good frothiness in the mouth when I was swirling it around. Um, but it's definitely a very apple-y type of wine. Very refreshing. This is totally a summer wine. Um, and I can't speak enough about how people need to drink more sparkling wine just outside of just celebrations. Um, yes, I'm using it for a celebration, using it for a special occasion, but people who know me personally know that I, if I can have sparkling wine, just as, you know, part of having dinner, um, the, 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 
and get the juices flowing if they cleanse the palate, but to start the palate, especially with salads and fruits and, and <clears throat> cheeses and all that kind of stuff, as a starter, it's a great, it's a great aperitif um, to, to get things going. And I love having sparkling wine. It just it makes you feel better, doesn't it? Having a little sparkling wine, just, just, you could be in a kind of a uh, downer mood. Get a little sparkling wine, you're going to get a little smile. You, it's going to make you feel good, you know? And it's not, it's, this is not a sweet wine. It's not like people eat sweets to feel better. This is just the, the feeling of having a sparkling wine. But it's definitely a, a, more of an apple rather than that bakery type of uh, aroma or, or flavors that you get from a champagne. You know, that's, that's a lot, you know, there's, it's different grapes. It's a different terroir. It's, it's, it's different production. I mean, it's still going to be in the bottle for second fermentation, but it's, it's going to be different in, in all those other aspects. So it should smell and taste different. Maybe a little bit of, of, um, of apricot in there too. It's $16. It's great quality. I think you should totally buy this if you find this out in your, in your wine shop. <clears throat> if you're in San Antonio, go see Ceci. She'll sell it to you. Okay. Same with the McNabb. I think they're both excellent quality wines. Uh, I highly recommend them. Um, you know, just all three of these wines here are, are all recommends. If you're out somewhere and you're looking for something, uh, we're having pasta here at lunch. Uh, the sauce was going. We're gonna be drinking. We're gonna be drinking the 337 uh, for sure uh, with with the pasta. Maybe try the Pinotage with it. Um, you know, and and I'm gonna keep drinking this sparkling wine here. And just a cheers, a cheers, and a thank you, and a salute, and all that good stuff for four years of video wine, video wine shows. Um, we've got more coming. Uh, I've got all these other wines. I still got to still have to review wines that were, you know, Hey, somebody was half a ring around the world brought wine back for me. So I got to do those. I have another person that sent me wine that I still haven't reviewed yet. Um, we've got other wines that I've had for a long time that I haven't reviewed, you know, the wine racks over here. Um, and I still have yet to review. I've got places I want to visit, all that good stuff. Tech SOM coming up. Uh, my, my certified SOM test coming up also in August. I finally got the dates for that. So I'll be going to Houston uh, for the test in late August. So I'm looking forward to that. And uh, really got to bone up on, on a lot of stuff here. So I, I, part of me feels like I, I'm, I'm perfectly ready for it, that I would pass it. And part of me kind of goes, now that I've got some holes that I need to, I need to really work on. But other than that, um, I just want to thank everybody and um, we'll see everyone again next time. <laughs>